Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm very excited to be joined today by Paul Bernard Jaroslawski, president of Freight Caviar and co-founder of ShipperCRM.com. Paul and I are both in this supply chain software as a service arena, and I know that many of you out there work in technology or also in capital funding within technology in this space, so I was looking forward to having him on the show today. Um, how are you doing today, Paul? Andy, I'm, uh, I just got healthy after being sick for a week, so I'm doing great. I have all this energy, and I'm motivated to get back into work. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on with me. I'm glad to hear you're on the mend. <laughs> it's always <laughs> a struggle catching up after something like that, isn't totally. it? Totally. Absolutely. Well, just to kick things off, I want to thank our sponsor, CyberFuels. If you're looking to save 26 to 95 cents per gallon of fuel while reducing emissions at combustion, please be sure and click on that link below. So today, you and I, Paul, we're going to be talking about leveraging media to grow a SaaS platform. To give our audience a little background, so can you tell us a little bit about your professional journey, what led up to Freight Caviar, and then ShipperCRM.com? Sure. Uh, so, uh, Andy, I began my career in logistics in Chicago. I graduated from U of I in 2015. My fraternity brother, his father owned a brokerage in Lincolnwood, uh, Lincolnwood, Illinois, uh, called Trek Freight. And he, I, I essentially got the job uh, after graduating with a psych degree from U of I. Uh, I was, I was thinking that I want to go do my master's in psychology and kind of go down some, some like that route. Mm -hmm. uh, but at that point, I, I really just wanted to also begin a career uh, somewhere. I just wanted to make some money and see if maybe I could make something of myself. Uh, so when I got the, the position of being an entry level freight broker. I, I took I took it. I was happy. I was 21. I finally got a, a paycheck each month. And then uh, I, I left that company after a year and I went to a company called Everest Transportation Systems out of Evanston, Illinois. It was a small brokerage, only about eight people. And uh, the owners uh, had this idea of wanting to open up an office in Ukraine. They had family ties in Ukraine and uh, they saw the opportunity to basically outsource uh, uh, employees, carrier sales reps, trackers, account managers out to Ukraine, uh, just, just to be able to grow their company. Uh, as we all know now, near shoring and outsourcing is relatively common in the industry. This was back in 2017. It was still before that like COVID spike that really caused that uh, near shoring outsourcing boom. But so I was 24 at that time. I was single. My grandparents live in Poland and I uh, used to travel to Poland all the time. So I was like, hey, I'll move to Ukraine. I'll open up an office for you guys. So they sent me out to Ukraine. I lived there for three years from November 2017 to November 2020. I built up an office from four people to 100. I was the only American there running the whole show. Uh, I loved it. I mean, I learned a lot. It was we worked on the U.S. market for freight brokerage, all from Ukraine. And then I ended up just getting burnt out and I'm like, it's time to do something new. So I quit and um, I planned on, I, I started my own brokerage. That was the whole idea behind it. But uh, I never really enjoyed it. I, I realized that there's, it's a lot more difficult to actually run a brokerage compared to just thinking you could run a brokerage. Uh, and that's kind of my mindset when I was working at my previous employer. I was like, I could do this. But then I, I ended <laughs> up doing it and I'm like, I don't really like it. Uh, but in the meantime, I was I was just having fun on Instagram, making freight memes from all that the time of spending uh, working as a as a freight broker, running a team, and freight caviar was literally just memes, and it and it kind of took off, um, and I got this audience built up of like young brokers in the industry uh, that enjoy my content, and I'm like, uh, well, I have this audience now. Let's see if I can make anything of it. Ended up getting some sponsors uh, like a year ago. Uh, and then kind of transitioned into media company where I have uh, sponsors uh, that sponsor me. So I have a newsletter that goes out three times a week and I have a weekly podcast. So it just kind of, it came out of nowhere. And I, I kind of, uh, I've liked uh, the growth I've seen. And it's been a lot of fun kind of transitioning from being a broker and knowing that to, to running a media company. And that's, that's I guess, like, uh, that's where I'm at right now. I run Freight Caviar and we just came out with an application, shipperscrm.com. Right. Yeah, I, I've caught your coverage over the last couple of years, and you've been on with some Freight Waves folks I've seen and uh, grown right. the Freight Caviar following. And it's, you know, and I'm in the same kind of space. We do media coverage. We interview executives, of course. And uh, mm -hmm. 
it's really helped with business development in a big way. I mean, oh, I, yeah. it just absolutely helps to get your coverage out there to have what's called social selling these days. Mm -hmm. I think it just works because people get to know you and what you're about and what you're doing. And uh, it's been really, really helpful. So, totally. yeah, absolutely. So I love your coverage. Love what you guys are doing. And on the on the shippercrm.com SaaS platform front, so you saw an unfulfilled need in the market, decided to launch the company while also continuing with your media coverage. Can you tell us about your experiences and how it's led to new business opportunities? Definitely. So we had this audience built up for Freight Caviar, and uh, I had I was talking to uh, to Charlie Dahoney. Uh, I'm not sure if you know him, but he's pretty well known. And he was like, Paul, you should, uh, you know, take your audience and do something with it. And in the sense of like selling a product to them. And I've always thought of that. And I, I've always kind of seen Freightways be kind of a staple of that, where they have they have sonar, but then they have the whole media front. And the media is their lead generation tool. And, you know, like one one uh, conversation led to another. And I got I got connected with my uh, my business partner on Twitter it was really random uh, and we ended up getting connected and we, we ended up talking to our, our business partner and an investor uh, and, you know, we, our business partner and investor came up with the idea for Shipper CRM and he's like, you know, you guys should do this. Uh, and at that point, my, uh, my technical partner was like, Paul, go on your Instagram and, you know, put an Instagram story out asking if people would want this product, they'd be interested in it. And I put out one Instagram story and we got, we received, I believe around 200 people gave us their email address saying they'd be interested in this product, being a customer. And right there, my, my business, my technical business partner was shocked. He was like, oh my gosh, you have 200 people, we have 200 people that signed up for this product. And it already gave us audit right away. We understood that there's a need for this product, um, for a CRM for, for uh, people to use that is more freight broker centric and just for the logistics industry. Plus the ability to request customer information, shipper information, directly into your from your CRM, uh, kind of bridging Zoom info and HubSpot in one. And so the the power of like having the the media side was we were able to test it out with just one simple question on our on our Instagram story: Will you want to use this? And and then we we got a flood of emails uh, that right. people said yes. And then nowadays uh, I don't do any. I mean, it's still relatively new, so I'm, I might be doing this later on. But at the current moment, we have demo scheduled throughout the whole week. And that those demos are just from people going on our website because of Freight Caviar and signing up for the demo. Same thing, they go on my LinkedIn profile, and there's like a link right there in, my, in, in the, the main profile saying, sign up for our demo today. And because of the sheer amount of people that follow me and look at my content, people come to us, which is unbelievable, which is, which is what, you know, uh, SaaS companies are hiring and spending lots of money just to get the marketing done and just to have a salesperson. And we seem to have that all in one and for free, essentially, because of the platform built up through Freight Caviar. Right. Absolutely. That's a great sign. When yeah. you've got that many people queued up, interested, that's a good, that's a really good sign. You know, with our SaaS platform, I talked to some people that I'd worked with, with large fleets and mm -hmm. uh, said, um, you know, what do you think about this idea? And one of them said, are you looking for investors? So I thought, okay, well, I think I'm on something probably. <laughs> this guy has Definitely. over a thousand truck fleet. So uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, it's, um, but I think it's a really good idea to ping your audience and and see what yeah. the interest level might be. And it sounds like you guys have a high amount of demand coming inbound, which is always what you want, right? Definitely. Definitely. And it's exciting for us. And everyone's looking to get more customers, especially in this in this environment that we're in. Everyone needs more shippers. So it's shippercrm.com. It's the number one tool to get more shippers. So it's also that kind of selling point right there. It's like, we'll help you get more business. Absolutely. So, you know, regarding shippercrm.com, what are some of the key challenges you're helping clients address? Well, in sales, if you're, if you're in sales, you know that you have to stay organized and you need to have contact information. And essentially, we're bridging those two together where it's like, if you want to close more sales, you got to be on top of your 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 uh, potential customer list, 
has to be organized. You have to put, input everything into a system. If you're a successful salesperson, you're more than likely going to be using some form of CRM at the current moment, or you're using mm-hmm. an Excel spreadsheet that's detailed out for your given needs. But having an application, having a tool that's simply freight broker centric, or even just logistics centric, will give you that more of, a, I guess, ability to, to be better organized about your clientele. Uh, and at the same time, we also have a very simple user interface, which is nice and clean. I kind of feel like if you go to other CRMs, they're kind of convoluted. Too many things are going on because they're generic CRMs. Whereas we just dialed in, we're like, this is going to be for freight professional salespeople. We don't want others to be using it uh, because we want it to be specifically made for those people. And then the second thing is a lot of people waste their time or they spend a lot of money getting contact information for shippers. They go to Zoom Info and they'll spend thousands of dollars Whereas we're like, hey, we could get content information for a much lower, much lower cost, and we could provide that to you. So not only will you be saving money, but you're also going to be saving time because instead of going through various outlets to get that that information, we'll provide it to you directly inside of the database. So therefore, we're we're keeping you organized and we're saving you time by giving you the contact information instead of you having to go elsewhere um, and saving money at the same time. Absolutely. You know, this reminds me of going back to like the late 1990s. I worked for a consulting company that helped companies go global, right? They sent me all over the world. I worked in nine countries altogether. But we had this conference room with a more than one. There were four whiteboards with our top prospects, what was going on with each one. And we would come in there and talk about each one. And mm-hmm. then I told him, you know, I've used CRM for years. And I think we need to organize this and start following up with people routinely. Right. And they're like, yeah, okay, we'll try it. Right. Then we had six sales engineers. They were literally engineers that were Mm -hmm. like reaching out to people. And we increased that supply chain practice by 250% in two years. It's amazing. It's just because you've got tools right in front of you to know who's due for what and who you should be following up with and what the details are. And, Man, I don't know what you would do these days without one. I mean, like you said, mm-hmm. you could have a really detailed Google sheet or a Microsoft Excel sheet, but it gets unruly the same. after a yeah. while. It really exactly. Doesn't. So having exactly. it all in one place with uh, with business intelligence, uh, man, it's a game changer. It is just a game changer for sure. Yeah, no, it helps. It helps greatly. And if if you're not using a CRM right now, I'm not even if it's not shipper CRM, go use a CRM. <laughs> uh, stay organized. Hundred <laughs> percent, absolutely. You know, we've got hundreds of companies we follow up with with different mm-hmm. things and different stages of. And, and man, I couldn't, I couldn't live without one. Frankly, mm-hmm. uh, I wouldn't want to. I could, but I, it would be ugly, basically. Definitely. So, um, mm-hmm. well, you know, th- for those who want to get more information about your work and how to get going, mm-hmm. you know, what are the best ways for people to connect with you? Uh, best ways. Uh, so on LinkedIn, uh, my name is Paul Bernard Jaroslawski. It's a pretty long name. Uh, you could probably find it in the notes here somewhere. You just copy and paste it. Uh, I put out a lot of content on Instagram under, under Freight Caviar. Uh, and then you could also follow Freight Caviar Media on Instagram for our latest podcast clips. Uh, and then, of course, sign, sign up for our newsletter on FreightCaviar.com uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 8 a.m. Central. We send out the latest freight news and updates uh, alongside uh, a freight meme. So we also have that. So I I highly recommend for everyone to sign up. Very good. Yep. I never thought about PBJ until you were on with Michael Vincent recently. And I saw (laughs) that about a week ago and that's awesome. You know, uh, PBJ, Paul Bernard, Jaroslawski, be sure and find him out there on LinkedIn and through Freight Caviar, I've been really enjoyed following your content. It's been really good. So this final question is one that I ask all of my guests. What would you say as a final word of advice for our friends out there listening or watching today? Uh, I would say like what's been really important for me is just to get started. Uh, and if you look at the progression of Freight Caviar, it was, well, it was getting started, uh, being consistent and staying patient because I've been building out this audience for over two years. And um, I first started off with just Instagram, making memes. Then I then I started a podcast and I started a newsletter that it, it kind of spiraled into various things. But I uh, what I would say is we, I was focused on one. 
I did it well. And then I, I moved on to another piece of content. Uh, and I would say every time I started, it was bad. Like I, my first memes were bad. My first podcast was bad. My first newsletter was bad. But <laughs> all just getting started and having that repetition where like, like don't be embarrassed about your first time because the end of the day, like not that many people will pay attention the first time anyway. You're going to have a lot of at-bats. You're going to get better every time. So just get started and keep going. Stay stay patient and be consistent. 100% agree. You know, we started our podcasting about two years ago. When I look back on my early podcasts, I'm like, ugh, that was so bad, man. Yeah. But if you stay consistent and you're out there providing valuable insights, news, executive insights like you're providing here, you know, your audience will build and grow, yeah. you know, yeah. and it, it does take time to build. I wouldn't yeah. recommend it be the only thing you're doing for business development, right? But it yeah. definitely, once it snowballed, it snowballs like a snowball rolling down a hill, right? At some yeah. point, it just, you get inbound, inbound, inbound. Uh, and it does totally. take time. It takes time. Yeah. Build it yeah. up, no doubt. Well, I get, you know, I appreciate you coming on with me, Paul. It's been fun talking with you, getting to know you offline and then talking with you. So thanks for coming on and sharing your insights today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure. That's going to do it for our show today, everyone. Thanks for listening or watching, and we will see you again soon. Take care. Yeah.